you're like me, you fish squirmy worms, and you probably catch a crap ton of fish on them. So I'm gonna show you how I tie my squirmy fly. Um, it's an extremely durable pattern. What's unique about it is I basically just tie a bait holder jig, and then I slide the squirmy material up over top, and that allows that squirmy material to be interchangeable. So as it breaks throughout the day, um, when this piece is no longer usable, I'll just take it off and slide on a new piece. So I'll tie a half dozen or so of these bait holder jigs, and then I'll just carry around my squirmy material in my fly box as I need it. Um, but as it turns out, this is actually an incredibly durable way to attach your squirmy. And oftentimes I won't switch these out for months of fishing. I'm all catch fish after fish and they tend to not break. Um, so let's get into it. Any jig hook and bead combination will work. The only thing is I do prefer something that has a longer shank. I'm not sure exactly which hook this is, but it is an Umqua X series in a size 12. And this is a Fulling Mill um, 3.2 millimeter gold slotted tungsten bead. And I'm using um, Viva 16 knot in red. Just whatever color is gonna look good with the scoring material you're using. Attach my thread. And then I'm just going to build a little bit of a thread dam right behind the bead to prevent it from moving around. With this 16 knot, this does take a minute, but I prefer the 16 knot later on. Okay, that's secure enough. Then I'll come back about, well, first I'll dress my, the shank of my hook as far back as I'm going to go which is only about to the point of the hook. And then I'll advance it back up to about a bead width behind the back of the bead. Then I use medium red ultra wire um, to make my little bait holder prongs. So what I do is I'll just set this right on top of the shank, take a couple wraps, pull it to make sure it stays right on top of the hook, and then take a few wraps backwards and again, I'll go about a bead width back. Then I use the nozzle of my bob, the nozzle of my bobbin, to pull that thread tight and keep it tight. And then I'll just kind of move my wire back and forth until it starts to get weak, and it should break right off. Then I'll make a few wraps behind it, trying to be careful to cover up that sharp end of the wire. And now I'm gonna add my second prong. So same thing as the first, just lay it right on top. Take a few tight wraps, make sure it stays sitting right on top. Come back about a hook width or a bead width. Wheel in that thread, brace the hook with your bobbin, wiggle it back and forth and it'll break off. And then again, I just gotta be extra careful here. I'm gonna make a little ramp of thread that goes up to the back edge of that broken wire and that will help the squirmy material slide on better. But as I'm initially covering that, I just need to be careful that I don't nick my thread and cut it. Okay, now I'll stand these straight up and I'll just kind of come in between cleaning up any um, unsmooth surfaces. The more smooth the surface is, the easier it is to slide on the squirmy material and then I'll just come up and do a little whip finish. Oh, there we go. Broke my thread, but I'll just snip it off. I'm gonna put a little bit more on there because I'm not actually sure if that whip finish cinched down or not. So I'll just cover that back up. And then do another whip finish. There we go. All right, you do need to snip this wire. So again, here's my crappy scissors. I'm just gonna use the very, very tips 
and I'm gonna brace the edge of the scissors right on top of the bead, and that gives me just about the right length on those prongs. And then I'm just gonna match the other one. You can make the other one even a little shorter if you want. Okay. Now the last step is just adding some resin. See how I'll angle those forward a little bit? That way it makes it easy to slide the wormy material up over top, but then it won't slide back down. For this, I just use um, solar as bone dry, very thin flowing. I'll make sure that I've kind of cleaned off the majority of it, of the brush for this step. And then I'll come back with a second coat later that's gonna be thicker and create more body to it. Come down onto the bare hook a little bit. Get behind the bead, let it soak down into that slot. All right, hit it with your UV torch. Okay, now I'm gonna come back with a little bit more ample drop of resin. Having that initial coat of resin down helps this uh, additional coat flow more evenly and you'll get a better body surface. I do like it to get in and around those prongs there it will help prop them up and keep them from bending back. Okay, that looks pretty good. Hit it with my torch again. Okay. Now let's see if I can show you how I'm actually going to thread this squirmy up on there. So I have my little length here. Just take this out of the vise and I'll move the vise out of the way and see if I can keep this in focus. Okay. So I'm just going to start pushing the squirmy material up on the end of the hook. Okay, then once I think I have enough, I'll push it up over the bend, get it into place there. Okay, then I'll just grab this bit, pull it right up over top. Now I'll try to just straighten it out, make it look a little neater, but the reality of it is, is you don't have to make this look neat. Um, the fish just love it, they go crazy for it, especially kokanee. I might add a few clips at the end of this video showing just some insane kokanee fishing I had for this. Um, the red is what they really liked, but I find in rivers for trout that this kind of pale purple is the way to go. So there you have it, a nice, easy, interchangeable, durable, squirmy jig.
What's that? Yeah. <laughs>